to be able to share together, to be blessed by the word of the Lord. Again, we are thankful for all of those that are joining in our parking lot service and those who are joining us via uh, Facebook and our web page and by other electronic means. Thank you and welcome uh, to the service today. As we shared uh, today for the message uh, for today, we invite you to turn your attention to uh, the book of Acts, uh, chapter 9, our historical book of the Christian church, Acts chapter 9, and if you will bring your attention to verse 36 in Acts chapter 9, and again we're reading from the New King James translation, Acts chapter 9, verse 36 reads, at Joppa, there was a certain disciple named Tabitha, which is translated Dorothus. This woman was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. But it happened in those days that she became sick and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. And since Lydia was near Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent two men to him, imploring him not to delay in coming to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he had come, they brought him to the upper room, and all the windows stood, widows stood by him weeping, showing the tunics and garments which Dorcas had made while she was with them. But Peter put them all out and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. Then he gave her his hand and lifted her up, and when he had called the saints and widows, and he presented her alive. And it came to be known throughout all Joppa, and many believed on the Lord. So it was that he stayed many days in Joppa with Simon a Tanner. Again, since this is what we consider here at our church, uh, Women's Month, uh, we thought it necessary to highlight some of the women of the Bible. And here today we have uh, one of our women of the Bible in the person of Tabitha. And I want to talk in looking at her life about a woman of charitable deeds. A woman of charitable deeds. Tabitha was her name. Her name means gazelle in Hebrew. In her Greek name, Dorcas, it still means gazelle. In animal life, the gazelle was known for speed and endurance. We don't know if uh, that's why Tabitha was known that way. Uh, also, that in animal life, the gazelle was known for having um, black, beautiful eyes. We don't know if as a child that maybe her eyes were beautiful. But the scripture does verify for us that she was a woman of charitable deeds. Tabitha was a Christian woman who seems to take it on the lesson that Jesus taught his disciples in Mark chapter 10, verse 42 through 45. But Jesus called them to himself and said to them, you know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever of you desires to be first shall be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Here in the text, Tabitha seems to have taken on that spirit of service for the Lord as she went about doing good deeds for many people in her neighborhood. Oh, my brothers and sisters, it's a good reminder of us of how we ought to live from day to day, that we ought to be about uh, our father's business, that we ought to be about doing something good for somebody along the way other than ourselves, that we ought to be seeking the role of greatness, as Jesus said, by becoming, first of all, servant of all. Uh, we don't know if Tabitha was a widow or not, but she could have qualified to be taken into that group in the church. 
For Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 9 and 10, Do not let a widow under 60 years old be taken into the number, and not unless she has been the wife of one man, well reported for good works, if she has brought up children, if she has lodged strangers, if she has washed <coughs> the saints' feet, even if she uh, has relieved the afflicted, if she has diligently followed every good work. Tabitha could possibly have qualified for the widow's group because she was full of good works and charitable deeds. And Dr. Luke here pauses briefly uh, to tell us about Tabitha. Uh, she's not overlooked in the text. She has a place in history. But Dr. Luke wants us to move forward to the narrative, in the narrative, to be able to see the glory of God. Uh, we often uh, think of uh, women uh, that they've been left out of the Bible. But they are there, but we have to look, look for them. We have to look at the details. And uh, Dr. Luke here in Acts brings forth for us those details. Uh, it's short, but uh, and not a whole lot of in-depth detail, but it lists her and what she did in life. Our story might be short stories sometimes in life, my brothers and sisters, that may be just a brief listening, listening of what we have done in life. But the important thing is that we do something for somebody along the way. I recall Dr. King in his speeches saying so often, uh, if I can help somebody as I pass along this way, if I can cheer somebody with a word or a song, then my living will not be in vain. Or we don't believe that Tabitha's living was in vain because she was a woman of good works and of charitable deeds. Note, if you will, that the scripture says that she was full of good works, good works and charitable deeds, that she was full of that. Uh, and when you talk about something being full, it means that, that it's filled up, that, that, that if you put anything else in, that it's going to be an overflowing. Uh, she was full, and uh, that means that uh, there was no room for anything else, that this is who she was, and, and, and this was what she did. And Paul used to, would say that for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. This is what Tabitha was all about, that she was full of good works and charitable deeds. She didn't have any room for any foolishness in life. She didn't have any room for other things to sidetrack her in life but she was filled up with doing good for the Lord. Oh, my brothers and sisters, we ought to take a lesson from Tabitha this morning and realize that we need to be filled with good works, that we need to be filled with charitable deeds for the Lord. But this is who she was, and this is who we ought to seek to be in life. When I think about Tabitha's uh, sewing ability and and then making clothes for others. That because she was a Christian woman, she must have witnessed to the other women. She must have prayed with the other women. It reminds me of what uh, an anonymous person once said about prayer, that a day hymned in prayer is less likely to come unwrapped. When we think of Tabitha here and think about her sewing uh, gift, that we are reminded that in prayer, that if we will hear my day in prayer, that uh, it's most likely that it will not come unraveled because we've already talked to the Father. We've already told him about what our needs are, that we've already asked him to embrace us and to cover us throughout the day, to keep a watch over our mouths, to keep a watch over our thought process, to keep a watch over our heart, heart conditions and, and, and let it, him lead us in the plain path. Or when we look at uh, Tabitha's life here, uh, we recognize that they honored her by showing Peter what she had done. Uh, they showed Peter all of the tunics and the garments which Tabitha had made while she was with them. But now that she is no longer with him, she's gone off the scene. Peter, when he is confronted by them and all that uh, she is, they're put out of the room so that Peter might be able to bring her back to life through the power of Jesus. 
When we look at how they honored her, that they honored her not only with their tunics and their garments, but they honored her with their tears. And they wept. And so we uh, find where Peter, we don't find where Peter scolded them uh, for weeping as those who have no hope. But he just simply put them out of the room so that he and the Lord can get together on letting the Lord's will be done. Suppose, if you will, that Dr. Luke could have put the video on pause for just a minute for us to hear each testimony of those that she had helped along the way. It probably would have been interesting. But Tabitha goes down in history as a woman full of good works and charitable deeds. Jesus said of Mary when she had anointed him with the expensive perfume that whenever her story was told that it would be as a memorial to her. The woman at the well uh, goes down in life um, as, as introducing those in her community to Jesus when she brings them back and asks, is this not the Christ? Oh, if you look at it, Grandmother Lois and Mother Eunice uh, have gone down in history as third generation Christians, if you will, because they introduced and set the example of faith for Timothy. Yes, my brothers and sister Tabitha is the woman of charitable deeds, but, but some here in our church, my brothers and sisters, have uh, recognition on them. When we think about how some go down in history, we think about Sister Marjorie Cobb and Sister Margaret Moore, how they started our uh, hospitality ministry in our church and has been moving on. We think about persons like Sister Cynthia Womack gone down in history and start up a person for our women's ministry that continues on. Then we think about Sister Helen Bullock who holds her place in history of the church as our first female church clerk. Y'all remember the times when men did everything. But Sister Bullock holds her place in history for being our first female church clerk. Sister T.O. Brown is, is listed as our first female Sunday school superintendent. And they have a place in history. May I ask somebody this morning, where is your place in Christian history? I, I said in Christian history, my brothers and sisters, because only what we do for Christ will last. Tabitha was a woman of charitable deeds, and Luke, oh, even though it's a brief mention, that she still goes down in history for having good works and charitable deeds. In our time, my brothers and sisters, she may have been one of those women volunteering at the soup kitchen or, or at the homeless shelter, may have been one of those volunteering uh, at the women's shelter, or taking in clothes and altering them for somebody else to use. Uh, your charitable deeds may be uh, at the schoolhouse or, or on your job or in your community, but we must all be about our father's business. Tabitha couldn't hear the other women's praises. She couldn't keep uh, hear their weeping and, and their moaning. And nobody may know of your good works and charitable deeds until you have been laid out like Tabitha. But if you listen to the songwriter, he will tell you that God's eye is on the sparrow. And I know that he watches me. If you listen to the prophet, he will tell you that the grass withers and the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. If you listen to John on the Isle of Patmos in Revelation, he will tell you that Jesus is coming quickly and that he's bringing his reward with him to give to every person according to his works. Uh, what will the record speak for you today, my brothers and sisters, when it's time for you to be called away? Will those weep over you or will there be some who uh, speak of your good works along the way? But the record is on high, my brothers and sisters, and if we're going to have a record there, if we're not busy, it's time to get busy. When we look at the text here, again, uh, Dr. Luke makes brief mention here about the life of Tabitha, about what she has done. And now Tabitha has passed away. She has been placed in an upper room. Her body has been washed and prepared uh, for burial. But somewhere along the way, 
and that they got the idea that they ought to send for Peter. Uh, they had heard about Peter's uh, record with Annas and how he had healed him and told him, uh, the Lord heals you and you need to get up, get your bed up and, and walk. And because they were not far away from where Peter had done this, uh, they sent for Peter. Uh, they sent for Peter because Peter had a gift. Peter had the gift of healing, if you will. But when you look at this thing here in the text that uh, they needed something greater than healing. Uh, they had a lady here that again had been washed and placed in the upper room. And they had a lady that life had gone out from. But they sent for Peter anyhow. Peter came and as he shared with them or listened to the ladies as they were sharing with him about what Tabitha had done. And he put them out of the room that he might be able to commune with God in Tabitha's behalf. Just as Tabitha had the gift of sowing, the gift of charitable deeds, she did good works. And the Lord used her dying to show his power through Peter. Jesus has raised Lazarus from the dead. And I suppose now that he wants us to know that women will rise also. He wants us to not forget that he's not about just one particular um, group of people or one person, but he loves us all, that he paid the ransom on Calvary's cross so that all of us might have the right to eternal life. When you look at the text, my brothers and sisters, Tabitha got her miracle that she didn't even ask for. The other disciples that were there at Joppa sent two men to Peter, imploring him not to delay in coming to them. Tells us that God can use our requests for others and turn it into his glory. Oh, my brothers and sisters, you and I don't have to be selfish about our miracles. God has enough miracles to go around. Luke drops Tabitha in the text to show us the power of Jesus Christ, how he was able to work through Peter's life. Her dying draws out the gift of Peter. And sometimes it's when others die that our gifts are drawn out. God used Tabitha and Peter to continue to demonstrate his great love for us and the power of his resurrection. Look at it, if you will, because of Tabitha being raised from the dead. Many people around Joppa accepted Jesus Christ. The church grew, my brothers and sisters. The church was on the move. The church wasn't meant to stay in Joppa, but to move on. The church wasn't uh, meant to stay at Simon the Tanner's house, but to be able to move on over to Cornelius' house, where that the Lord might let Peter deal with all kinds of people and, and let the Gentile world that consisted of all races and nationalities be able to know that Jesus had paid the cost on Calvary's cross and that he had died for human beings everywhere. If Tabitha had not been raised from the dead, she had already been brought to glory uh, of the Lord and by using her gifts and sowing and doing charitable deeds. But because of who she was, somehow that the Lord chose to let Peter come around and be able to have that connection with the Holy Spirit and the power of resurrection to raise Tabitha from the dead. Oh, let us ponder today, my brothers and sisters, that when that day comes, when we have closed our eyes in the sleep of death, when they have washed us and laid us out on our cooling board, what will be said of us? Will we live on in others? Will what we have be passed on to others? Oh, my brothers and sisters, we ought to seek to pass it on to somebody else. We must keep on telling dying men, women, boys, and girls. Know that folk don't want to listen. But we have to keep saying that the wedges of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Have to keep on letting folk know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. We need to keep on telling others that Jesus died one Friday evening on Calvary's cross. That not only did he die, but he was taken down and buried in a borrowed tomb. 
And he stayed in that tomb for three days and three nights. But early on Sunday morning, what we call the first day of the week now, that Jesus got up with all power in heaven and in earth. He has the power to save, my brothers and sisters. He has the power to speak and men shall live. He has the speak power to speak and men shall lay down and die. Oh, my brothers and sisters, will we consider today doing good works? Will we consider today doing charitable deeds? Will we consider that whatever we do in life, that we would do it under Jesus Christ, our Savior? And by doing it under Jesus Christ, our Savior, that we would bring glory and honor to him, just as Tabitha did. May we pray. Lord, we thank you now for the day and for the beauty of the day. Thank you for the opportunity to share your word again. Pray that it would not go out and come back void, but that it would help some soul along the way. Pray today for those who are outside of the ark of safety, that they will come to trust you as Lord and Savior in their lives before it is eternally too late. We thank you now and we praise you. We give you the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for joining us today.